There are currently around 170 million pieces of space debris flying at very high velocities in Earth's orbit. This number is set to increase as thousands of mini-satellites are being added to the dangerous mix every year. Here are the details. The Salt Lake Tribune reports that a new scientific study is looking at ways to keep the Earth from growing a visible ring made entirely of junk. The study found that there are currently 170 million pieces of space junk in orbit around Earth. Of these, 23,000 are larger than a softball and dangerous enough to be attracted by the U.S. Department of Defense. One of the study's contributors, robotics professor Jake Abbott of the University of Utah, said that Earth is on course to have its own rings. They'll just be made of junk. The 170 million pieces of space junk travel at extremely high speeds and can each cause severe damage to spacecraft and astronauts. This number is expected to rise sharply, as SpaceX and Amazon are currently putting thousands of small satellites in orbit per year. Professor Abbott told the Salt Lake Tribune that space junk pieces always spin, so they would break robotic arms, which is why he and his team are looking at building spacecraft with highly specialized magnets to catch and collect debris in Earth orbit. Any future world war would exponentially increase the number of dangerous space junk pieces as major nations are building up arsenals of anti-satellite missiles that would blow up thousands of satellites and create billions of pieces of space debris. Russia has conducted a controversial missile test in space, with consequences for the International Space Station. Here's what you need to know. A Russian anti-satellite missile test blew up one of its own satellites on Monday, November 15th, according to the BBC resulting in 1,500 pieces of trackable orbital debris and causing astronauts on the International Space Station to shelter in capsules for safety. Political reports that Russia did not warn the U.S. about the test in advance, and subsequently, the seven-member crew of the ISS, which included three Russian cosmonauts, was instructed to shelter inside the Soyuz and Dragon crew capsules for two hours, according to NASA. The space station is now passing through or near the debris cloud from Cosmos 1408 every 90 minutes, though there is no need to shelter beyond the second and third passes. More broadly, the BBC says space debris is a rapidly worsening situation, with roughly a million to one to ten centimeter objects floating in uncontrolled orbit of Earth, and Time magazine pointing out that much of it is moving at over 17,000 miles per hour. Part of the explanation for this is that Russia is not the first country to shoot down a satellite in this way, with India, China, and the U.S. also having done so previously. However, the BBC also points out that space junk is a much broader phenomenon, arising from 64 years of activity above our heads, and this was emphasized in May this year, when NASA released photos of a small hole that had been punched through the ISS's Canadarm2 robotic arm by an unknown piece of debris. NASA said the robotic arm worked normally despite the damage, but the ISS also had to perform emergency maneuvers three times in a year before that in order to avoid separate collisions, according to Science Alert, and unfortunately, while larger pieces of debris can be tracked to help with this process, millions of smaller fragments are too small to be tracked. A piece of space debris not much wider than a millimeter has smashed a hole through an important part of the International Space Station. Here are the details. Science Alert reports that a piece of space debris has hit and damaged part of the International Space Station. Photos released by NASA shows a small hole that had been punched through the station's Canadarm2 robotic arm. The arm has been a fixture on the ISS for 20 years. It's a multi-jointed titanium robotic arm that can assist with maneuvering objects outside the ISS. It's unclear exactly when the impact occurred. The damage was first noticed on May 12th during a routine inspection. NASA says the robotic arm seems to be working normally despite the damage. The space debris problem does seem to be increasing. Last year, the ISS had to perform emergency maneuvers three times to avoid collisions with space debris at its altitude of around 400 kilometers. An estimated 130 million fragments of man-made material smaller than a millimeter are orbiting Earth right now. Over 23,000 pieces bigger than a softball are being tracked in low Earth orbit to help satellites and the ISS avoid collisions, but the millions of smaller fragments are too small to be tracked. Earth's superpowers have added to this space debris by blowing up satellites with missiles in the past. The latest to do so was China, who blew up one of its orbiting satellites in 2007, adding more than 2 million pieces of scrap larger than a millimeter in size. In Earth's orbit, small fragments like that can travel at speeds of around 32,000 kilometers per hour, each with the potential to cause more damage than a shell fired from a tank. 
There are currently more than 160,000 pieces of space junk floating in Earth's orbit, and 34,000 of these are no longer than 10 centimeters. These pieces move at incredible speeds and pose a real danger to all current and future spacecraft. The BBC reports that the world's first test satellite that uses magnets to gather up space junk will launch this week. The test satellite is called ELSA-D and it consists of two spacecraft, a 175kg chaser and a 17kg target. These two units will go up together on a Soyuz rocket from the Baikonur Cosmodrome in Kazakhstan and once in orbit, separate to play multiple games of cat and mouse. The chaser will use its sensors to find and chase down the target, latching onto it via a magnetic docking plate. It will then release the target for other capture experiments. The tasks will become increasingly complex, with the most difficult maneuver requiring the chaser to grab the target as it is tumbling. Ultimately, the chaser will grab the target and drop out of orbit to burn up in the atmosphere. The company that created the LCD test satellite, Astroscale, says the next phase of the program would be to retrieve multiple pieces of debris in a single mission. The company expects to launch this mission by the end of 2023. SFGATE reports that a recent massive glacial avalanche in Tibet was predicted by scientists who studied images created by a constellation of small satellites, each no bigger than a shoebox. Operated by a company called Planet, these satellites weigh just over 5 kilograms each and fly in flocks of around 175 satellites. If one fails, the company replaces it. And as better batteries, solar arrays, and cameras become available, the company simply updates its satellites. Thus, a quiet and often overlooked revolution has taken place in the way satellites are manufactured and operated. The result is an explosion of data and imagery from orbit. Like computers, satellites have also shrunk drastically. Instead of being the size of a truck, costing as much as $400 million, satellites now are often no larger than a microwave. They now cost as little as a million dollars or less and can be mass-produced in factories. Their numbers have also grown significantly. The number of satellites in operation almost tripled from 2015 to about 3,371 by the end of 2020. For more news animations and explainers, hit the subscribe and bell button to join the Tomo News family. Thanks for watching.